students welcome to the lecture on national income and related aggregates and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives understand the concept of national income understand the concept of consumption goods study about the various approaches for calculating national income let us start today's lecture with some basic concepts investment analysis Investment analysis is that it is being given added emphasis these days due to level of liquidity available in our global markets, cash chasing, the best markets, the best products, the best investment sectors, the next best investment opportunity. Aggregate economic analysis is concerned with issues related to macroeconomics, issues such as gross domestic product, national income, inflation, unemployment rates and economic fluctuations known as business cycles. Dandification, aggregate, demand and supply are key issues in aggregate economic analysis. Aggregate demand and supply measure the total demand and supply of goods and services across an entire economy. Aggregate economic analysis has some benefits. Aggregate economic analysis helps government leaders determine the state of the overall economy, setting their monetary and fiscal policies accordingly. Because governments use fiscal and monetary policies to stimulate or curb aggregate demand and supply, aggregate economic analysis is concerned with the impact of fiscal and monetary policy on macroeconomic indicators such as the inflation rate or the unemployment rate. Understanding the effects under aggregate analysis when aggregate demand rises faster than aggregate supply inflation rises. Lagging Aggregate demand, meanwhile, may be a sign of an economic recession. Consideration economics often differ on the proper role of government in promoting stable prices, economic growth and low level of unemployment. Leading indicators, the index of leading economic indicators calculated by the conference board, a non-governmental organization is an example of aggregate economic analysts. Components include average working hours, manufacturers, orders for goods and building permits for residential and commercial buildings. The single index value produced by the conference board has been effected at predicting recessions. So what do you think are the main influences on the components of national income? That is easy. National income is made up of spending or consumption plus investment plus government spending plus exports minus imports. But you are missing the point. The question is what do each of the components of national income depend on? Right, Joe. So can anyone answer the question? Well, consumption or spending depends mainly on income. If income rises then so does consumption and if income falls then so does consumption. And to a lesser degree spending depends on expectations. If people have a positive outlook of the future they are likely to spend more than if they have a pessimistic outlook. Hillary can you tackle the influences on investment? Well surprisingly enough investment does not depend on income. Rather it depends on expectations and interest rates. Yes if expectations are positive then investment will rise while if they are negative then investment will fall. And if interest rates rise the cost of borrowing will rise and investment will fall and if rates fall money becomes cheaper and investment will rise. Mr. President, can you explain how your government can continue to increase government spending when national income is falling? Yes I would like to hear that. That is easy. The Irish gave me the idea. Government spending depends not on national income but on decisions made by politicians like us. Look at President Kenny of Ireland. Spending billions he does not have, how? Well by borrowing and not worrying too much about his budget deficit. And exports depend not on our income but on the income of our trading partners. Lastly Joe can you explain the main influence on the level of imports in the economy? Yes, well, imports depend on our national income. As income increases it is fair to expect that some of that higher income will be spent on imports so imports will rise also. And it is reasonable to say that as income rises then so will demand for imported raw materials used in domestic production. As income is rising then so domestic consumption. Well that is it people, hope this issue has been cleared up for you and thank you to our panel. In this 
section, I will introduce you to various kind of goods which are as follows. Consumer goods products that are purchased for consumption by the average consumer, alternatively called final goods. Consumer goods are the end result of production and manufacturing and are what consumer will see on the store shelf. Clothing, food, automobiles and jewellery are all examples of consumer goods. The measurement of consumer goods sales is important in the assessment of gross domestic product and in determining the health of the overall economy. Demand for consumer goods indicates whether consumers are willing to part with cash. Items are only counted as consumer goods. Once if they are resold, they will not be included in economic calculation. Capital goods Capital goods are tangible objects that are used in the production of other goods or commodities or during the providing of services. They can include things such as buildings, machineries, tools, computers and any other equipment that is used to make or do something else which can then be sold to another party. Why capital goods are important? The importance of capital goods. It allows a business to create goods or provide services for consumers in an industry where production equipment and materials are quite expensive, they can be a high barrier to entry for new companies and the number of companies competing in the market is often relatively small. Capital spending can be a sign that a manufacturer expects growth or at least a steady demand for its products, a potentially positive economic sign. Final Goods a good or service that is consumed by the end user and does not require any further processing are a final goods. Final goods also term final goods and services are purchased through the product market by the four macroeconomic sectors, household, business, government and foreign. As consumption expenditure, investment expenditure, government purchase and exports. Gross domestic product seeks to measure the total market value of final goods and services produced by the economy in a given period. This is the end result of the production process. There are certain ways in which final goods are brought. Consumption. The most prevalent type of final good is that purchased by the household sector to satisfy wants and needs. These are termed consumption goods and expenditures on these goods are consumption expenditures. Humans are the ultimate user. These goods are not purchased as an input in the production of another good. Investment. Another important type of final goods involve investment expenditures on capital goods that are used as factors in the production of other goods. The ultimate or intended purchase of these final goods is to produce other goods. Government Purchases Government purchases are expenditures made by the government sector on the goods and services that it uses when performing government function. Two examples of government purchases of the consumption variety are school lunches and congressional trips. Examples of government purchases of the capital investment variety include the city of Shady Value buying a garbage truck or the U.S. Department of Commerce buying a computer. Intermediate Goods All those goods which are used by the producer for producing other goods are known as intermediate goods. These goods are not demanded for their own sake but for their use in producing other goods. Raw materials and semi-finished goods are regarded as intermediate goods. For example, raw cotton used for the production of yarn is intermediate goods. The value of intermediate goods is not taken into account while estimating the gross domestic product GDP. Before moving ahead, you must know about two important variables which help us in measuring national income. Flow variables. A flow variable is a variable that is measured over a period of time. This period could be daily, weekly or monthly. Example, national income. Stock variables. Stock variables are those variables that are measured at a particular point of time. Example of stock variable is company's balance sheet. I hope you understood this concept that I just explained. Now we will move further and study social cost. Cost-benefit analysis is a process for evaluating the merits of a particular project or course of action in a systematic and rigorous way. 
Social cost benefit analysis refers to cases where the project has a broad impact across society and as such is usually carried out by the government. The costs and benefits considered by social cost benefit analysis are not limited to easily quantifiable changes in material goods but should be construed in their widest sense measuring changes in individual utility and total social welfare. In its essence, cost-benefit analysis is extremely indeed trivially simple, evaluate costs, C and benefits B for the project under consideration and proceed with it if and only if benefits match or exceed the cost. That is B greater than equals C. So what makes things more complex? There are a variety of factors. Benefits and costs may accrue to different sets of people. If this is so, we need some way to aggregate and compare different benefits and costs across people. Benefits and costs may occur at different points in time. In this case, we need to compare the value of outcomes at different points in time. Benefits and costs may relate to different types of goods and it may be difficult to compare their relative values. This usually occurs when one of the goods does not have an obvious and agreed upon price. For example, we may be spending standard capital goods today in order to obtain environmental benefits tomorrow. Benefits and costs may be uncertain. Let's look at the step involved in costs. Benefit analysis. There are mainly six steps. Understand the cost of status quo. We need this to measure the relative merit of an investment against the does nothing option. Sometimes doing nothing is the right decision. Identify cost. Consider upfront cost as well as any in future years. Almost any initiative, repeat, almost any initiative will have upfront cost. Identifying benefits. As certain what additional revenue or return will come in from the investment, this is dicey because we need to define an ROI. To another, it may be revenue. To another, it may be market share, etc. ROI is subjective and we will need to consider all perspective and ROI definition to truly get a true benefit picture or metric. Determine the cost savings. What can we stop doing if we make this investment? Sometimes it is a trade-off. If we do X, can we stop using Y? This is another hidden variable that many forget about. If you stop doing Y because of X, that cost saving could exponentially increase the benefits of doing the initiative. Create a timeline for expected cost and revenue. Map out when the cost and benefits will occur and how much they will be. This is critical for two reasons. One, expectation. By having a defined timeline, we can align and define expectation of all interested parties. In this section, I will teach about national income. Before moving ahead, I want you to understand few concepts. National income is defined as the sum total of all the goods and services produced in a country in a particular period of time. Normally, this period consists of one year duration as a year is neither too short nor too long a period. National Repeat, national product is usually used synonymous with national income. Gross income, the amount by which sales revenue exceeds production cost, cost of sales, a high gross income means stability in times of economic downturn because the company can afford to cut prices. A low gross income may mean low credit worthiness or inability to fight off competition. Net income. The total revenue in accounting period minus all expenses during the same period if income taxes and interest are not deducted, it is called operating profit or loss as the case may be, also called earnings, net earnings or net profit. The important concept of national income are gross domestic product GDP. Gross domestic product GDP is the total market value of all final goods and services currently produced within the domestic territory of a country in a year. Four things must be noted regarding this definition. First, it measures the market value of annual output of goods and services currently produced. This implies that GDP is a monetary measure. Secondly, for calculating GDP, accurately all goods and services produced in any given year must be counted only once so as to avoid double counting. So GDP should include the value of only final 
goods and services and ignores the transaction involving intermediate goods. Thirdly, GDP includes only currently produced goods and services in a year. Market, transaction involving goods produced in the previous periods such as old houses, old cars, factories built earlier are not included in GDP of the current year. Lastly, GDP refers to the value of goods and services produced within the domestic territory of a country by nationals or non-nationals. Gross National Product GNP Gross National Product is the total market value of all final goods and services produced in a year. GNP includes net factor income from abroad whereas GDP does not. Therefore, GNP equal to GDP plus net factor income from abroad Net factor income from abroad equal to factor income received by Indian nationals from abroad minus factor income paid to foreign nationals working in India. Net national product NNP at market price NNP is the market value of all final goods and services after providing for depreciation that is when charges for depreciation are deducted from the GNP, we get NNP at market price. Therefore, NNP is equal to GNP minus depreciation. Depreciation is the consumption of fixed capital or fall in the value of fixed capital due to wear and tear. Net national product NNP at factor cost national income. NNP at factor cost or national income is the sum of wages, rent, interest and profits paid to factors for their contribution to the production of goods and services in a year. It may be noted that NNP at factor cost, NNP at market price minus indirect taxes plus subsidies. Personal income. Personal income is the sum of all incomes actually received by all individuals or household during a given year. In national income, there are some income which is earned but not actually received by household such as social security contribution, corporate income, taxes and undistributed profits. On the other hand, there are income transfer payment which is received but not currently earned such as old age pensions, unemployment doles, relief payments, etc. Thus, in moving from national income to personal income, we must subtract the incomes earned but not received and add incomes received but not currently earned. Therefore, personal income is equal to national income minus social security contribution minus corporate income taxes minus undistributed corporate profits plus transfer payments. Disposable income, disposable earnings also known as disposable income are a measure of a person's ability to manage essential household costs after mandatory taxes have been deducted from gross earnings. It indicates how much money the employees has left over to spend or invest. Disposable income equal to personal income minus personal taxes. Disposable income can either be consumed or saved. Therefore, disposable income is equal to consumption plus saving. Till now, you must be clear about the basic relating to national income. Now, we will move further and study approaches to measurement of national income. Measurement of national income in an economy is very important because it gives an estimation of the welfare of the economy. National income is the total of the value of the goods and the services which are produced in an economy. There are mainly three methods for measuring the national income. Value added method, GDP at market price is equal to value of output in a year minus intermediate consumption, NNP at factor cost equal to GDP at market price minus depreciation plus NFIA, net factor income from abroad minus net indirect taxes. Income method, NDP at factor cost is equal to compensation of employee plus operating surplus plus mixed income or self-employed. National income is equal to NDP at factor cost plus NFIA net factor income from abroad. Expenditure method GDP equal to C plus I plus G plus overall X minus M where C is equal to personal consumption expenditures, I is equal to gross investment, G is equal to government consumption, X is equal to gross Exports, M is equal to gross imports. Income approach and expenditure approach are defined follows. 
income approach. The income approach is issued to estimate the market value of income producing properties such as office buildings, warehouses, apartment buildings and shopping centers. The income approach is based on an estimate of net income from the operation of an income producing activities. The principle of anticipation is the basic of the income approach and affirms that value is created by the expectation of benefits to be derived from possession, operation and or capital gained at rescale. The income approach is used when reliable financial data is available for recent sales of similar income properties in a given marketplace. Expenditure approach. The expenditure approach is a method for calculating gross domestic product GDP by adding up expenditures on goods and services. The logic behind this approach relies on the idea that people and companies make goods and things for sale and therefore determining the volume of sales provides information about how much they make. This is another way for determining GDP. There are four main categories in the expenditure approach. The first is the consumption of products and services. The second is investment, funds, companies and individual use to buy inventory and fixed assets. Government spending is also a component. National exports. In any given year, people in the economy produce goods and services. They produce television sets, books, pencil sharpeners, DVD players, attorney services, haircuts and much more. Have you ever wondered what the total dollar value of all those goods and services is in your island? Well, it's a massive exercise. So we have never thought of it and I don't see any meaning of finding out the total value of goods and services in the economy. First of all, there is a very simple and holistic way to calculate the value of goods and services in the economy. And it is a very meaningful number. It gives an idea of the overall progress of the economy. Let us see more in detail about this number in my island. Last year, it was $1.384 trillion. In other words, last year, People living and working in our island have produced $1.384 trillion worth of goods and services. That dollar amount, $1.384 trillion, is what we call as the gross domestic product. Simply put, gross domestic product, GDP, is the total market value of all final goods and services produced annually within a country's borders. Can you please explain by taking a simple example? For sure. Consider a simple economy in which one good is produced and sold. Rahul find an apple seed and plant it. In some years, an apple tree appears. Rahul pays Ram $1.05 in wages to pick and box the apples. Next, Rahul sells the apples to Vijay for $8. Vijay turns the apples into apple juice and sells the apple juice to Monica for $10. Monica consumes the juice. What is the GDP in this simple economy? Is it $5? Is it $13? Is it $10? $18? Or some other dollar amount? We use three approaches in our island to compute GDP. The expenditure approach, the income approach and the value added approach. Let me describe you each approach in terms of a simple economy. Let's first see expenditure approach. To compute GDP using the expenditure approach, we add the amount of money spent by buyers on final goods and services. The words final goods and services are important in computing GDP because not all goods are final goods. Some goods are intermediate goods. Please define clearly both final good and intermediate good. I am little confused. See, a final good or service is a good in the hands of the ultimate consumer. 
Think of buyers at each stage of value creation. The first buyer in our simple economy was Vijay. He bought apples from Rahul. The second buyer was Monica, who bought the apple juice from Vijay. Monica is the final buyer in this economy. She is the final user, the ultimate consumer, and she is consuming the final product, which is apple juice. In other words, she herself doesn't add any further value to it and doesn't sell to another person. The good that she buys is the final good. So then, what are the apples? Aren't they a final good too? No. In this imaginary economy, the apples is an intermediate good because they were not consumed directly by consumers like Monica. An intermediate good is an input in the production of a final good. In other words, the apples were used to produce apple juice, the final good. I hope you understand this concept that I just explained. Now we will move further and study problem of computation of per capita income. How to calculate country per capita income? When country GDP per capita is calculated, it is done by dividing the nominal or real GDP by the country's population. When the GDP is adjusted for inflation, it is called nominal GDP. Country per capita income as economic indicator. Country per capita is used to measure a country's financial well-being, particularly in comparison with other regions or nation. That is one reason why per capita incomes are expressed in terms of international currencies such as US dollars. For a country, it goes beyond being a mathematical formula of economic growth as it also reveals the quality and standard of living of its people. For economists, however, an increase in country per capita income signifies national economic growth. Economists and policy planners use country per capita income to estimate future trends of national economy, devise app strategies to tackle potential fiscal threats to the economy, propel a country's monetary activities, strengthen a country's economic climate, divide structural adjustment to avert rising inflation in the wake of high purchasing power. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Gross domestic product GDP is the total market value of all final goods and services currently produced within the domestic territory of a country in a year. Goods are divided into four categories, consumer goods, capital goods, final goods and intermediate goods. Gross income is the amount by which sales revenue exceeds production costs, cost of sales, a high gross Income means stability in times of economic downturn because the company can afford to cut prices. A low gross income may mean low credit worthiness or inability to fight off competition. Net income is the total revenue in an accounting period minus all expenses during the same period. If income taxes and interest are not deducted, it is called operating profit or loss as a case may be also called earnings, net earnings or net profit. Net national product, NNP, at market price is the market value of all final goods and services after providing for depreciation. That is, when charges for depreciation are deducted from the GNP, we get NNP at market price. Expenditure method is the summation of the expenditure done by all the sectors of the economy on final goods and services for the purpose of estimating national income. In income approach, income of the various individuals, firms and government sectors is added to get national income. In value added method, value of the final good and services is added to get the national income.